Hello everyone, for today's video, we are going to discuss drugs acting on your renal system. So these are the medications specifically acting on your kidneys. Before we proceed to the actual medications, let us first have an actual review first of the anatomy and physiology of your um, anatomy and physiology of the kidneys. Okay, pag-usapan natin to. So the blood is filtered primarily by the kidney and that is the main function of the kidneys. Yeah. So from the heart into your kidneys, it goes specifically into your glomerulus. Yan po yung ating glomerulus. And the glomerulus will filter now the blood. So it receives blood from the afferent arterioles into the efferent arterioles. Now there are several functions that the kidney do. Number one is the regulation Okay, this is the regulation of your um, bone mineral metabolism, which is the excretion and retention of calcium, depending on how many calcium the body needs. Okay, another one is the regulation of red blood cell. This is in relation to hormone that is called erythropoietin. So erythropoietin is a hormone produced by your kidney that facilitates erythropoiesis. It stimulates erythropoiesis or the production of RBC in the bone marrow. Yun po ang primarily function niya. Okay? Another one is the excretion of waste products. So everything we eat and drink, my waste products po yan. It will be ex uh, detoxified by the liver and will go to the uh, kidney for filtration and excreted through your urine. So we also have here the influence on blood pH by because our blood pH is also dictated by the amount of acids or alkalines being released from our body. And the regulation of blood pressure which is in relation to the function of aldosterone, okay, that acts during the RAS activation or your renin angiotensin aldosterone system. I do have a separate discussion about that on my different videos. Okay? So let us proceed. When I talk about your um, uh, when I talk about your kidney, okay, your kidney, okay, produces now your urine. So how does the urine produce? It starts from the arterioles. So from the afferent arterioles, afferent arterioles goes inside the kidney, specifically in your glomerulus. So from okay from that area, so afferent arterioles it will go to the afferent uh, afferent arterioles and exit towards your efferent arterioles. But after ng filtration, whatever fluids and electrolytes are filtrated, it will go here in your Bowman's capsule. So the Bowman's capsule is the one that encapsulates the glomerulus and it also receives whatever fluid and electrolytes is filtered by the glomerulus. So the filtration rate per minute is 125 ml per minute. It will go into the Bowman's capsule, into the proximal tubules, and in the proximal tubules, magkakaroon tayo ng tinatawag na reabsorption. The reabsorption, okay, is a rate of around 124 ml per minute or around 124 to 124.5 ml per minute, which will then now proceed into the urinary excretion of around 0 0.5 to 1 ml per minute. So paano nangyari yun? Subtract lang natin yung GFR plus the reabsorption rate which is around 0 0.5 to 1 ml. Pero nakalagay lang sa aking slides ngayon is 1 ml. But the rate is actually 0 0.5 to 1 ml ang naproproduce na urine. So that 0 0.5 to 1 ml per minute multiplied 60. Okay? 60 minutes kasi per hour. 60 minutes per hour. So that 0 0.5 to 1 ml, that would give you around 30 to 60 ml per hour of urine output and that is our normal urine output per hour at yan naman po ang ilalabas ng ating kidney as a urine now paano nangyayari yan sir it starts here so dito lang natin yung proseso from the afferent arterioles goes into your glomerulus in the glomerulus filtration takes place and the blood plus the cells and the protein will continuously go into the efferent arterioles and they maintain yung tinatawag nating osmotic pressure. Now, whatever is filtrated will go to the Bowman's capsule into the proximal tubules. 
So the proximal tubules here, katapat niya ngayon si arterioles, the arterioles being with high osmotic pressure absorbs now the excess glucose, amino acids, sodium, and these are all solutes. And solutes absorbs water. So pag inireabsorb yan ng arterioles natin, it comes with the water. So inihigop niya rin yung tubig papunta doon sa arterioles. So whatever is left will continuously goes down, okay, here in the loop of Henle. So this is your loop of Henle. The main or primary function of your loop of Henle is water reabsorption by osmosis. So ang ating epherioles or the peritubular capillaries of the epherioles contains higher osmosis. The higher osmosis will now pull the water from the loop of Henle going into the blood vessel. Okay? Then whatever is left will continue into the distal tubules will continuous where continuous reabsorption takes place including the reabsorption of sodium or the aldosterone effect. Aldosterone is primarily mineral or corticoids or salt produced by your adrenal gland. Okay? It will also reabsorb bicarbonate. So bicarbonate is reabsorbed through the help of your carbonic okay, anhydrin, anhydrase. Okay? Then we have your sodium plus your chloride which make up the salt. Ibig sabihin, doon sa epherials natin, tataas ulit ang kanyang osmosis. And because of that increased osmosis, it will reabsorb more water until it reaches here. Okay? Dito naman, magkakaroon tayo ng reverse osmosis. The reverse osmosis will be then, okay, the distal tubule will pull the waste products including the drugs that is present in your epherioles, the hydrogen carbons, and your potassium going into your distal tubule papunta sa ating, okay, urine catchment which is the collecting duct. The collecting duct will go to the ureter into the bladder and doon may iipon yung hihi natin until we feel the urge to urinate. Okay? Ngayon, yung dami ng ihi na mapuproduce ay nakadepende din okay? or it also depends on how many antidiuretic hormone is produced by your pituitary gland. The higher the, pit, the, higher the ADH or antidiuretic hormone, high ADH equals to decrease urine while low ADH antidiuretic hormone means increase urine okay that's very basic concept okay so that's how fluids and electrolytes is filtered reabsorbed and excreted into our kidneys okay so please take note of that because that would be the basis of our discussions with regards to the medications which we're now going to discuss after I present these important things to remember. So in studying your drugs and even your fluids and electrolytes, we always need to remember the normal values of the electrolytes. We have here number one, the normal values of your sodium. Sodium is the major intravascular cations. Siya yung pinakamarami na electrolytes sa ating dugo. Okay? Followed by chloride. Okay, kabaliktaran naman po niya, I see. Kabaliktaran naman po niya. Oh, I'm sorry for that. Okay, the Okay? Okay, the opposite is your potassium. So potassium is 3.5 to 5.0. Okay? It has to maintain low level of potassium sa dugo around 3.5 to 5.0 because your potassium is the major intracellular cation, meaning it has to be inside the cell. It should be lesser inside the blood vessel because it can cause arrhythmia. Okay? Other, okay, important things to remember is the calcium level of about 8.5 to 10.2 milligram per deciliter, chloride of 97 to 100 milliosmoles per liter, and magnesium of around 1.5 to 2.2 milligram per deciliter. This is very important, especially when you are taking magnesium sulfate. For or giving magnesium sulfate, especially to patients with pregnancy-induced pregnancy hypertension, so that they will not develop seizure. Okay, a high dose of magnesium in the blood will correspond magnesium toxicity. It will cause an absence patellar reflex or deep tendon reflex. So the antidote to manage that condition is to give 
calcium because magnesium and calcium are opposite to one another. Okay? Then we have your ICP, your intracranial pressure. It is important for us to know this. This is less than 15 milligram per uh, uh, 15 millimeter per mercury. So knowing the ICP level will determine now later on yung gamit ng ating osmotic diuretic. And we also have your increased intraocular pressure or your intraocular pressure which is 10 to 21 millimeter per mercury. This is important naman in dealing with patient with glaucoma. That is also going to take diuretics. Okay? So those are the important things to remember. Now, we proceed to the actual medications. We have your diuretics. Diuretics comes from the word diuresis. Diuresis. Diuresis means urination. So basically, these medications promote urinations. The main uh, functions is to increase the amount of water and salt expelled from the body. It accelerates the rate of urine formation and results in the removal of sodium and water in the body, especially in excessive uh, accumulation. So by primarily, diuretics affects the normal sodium resorption, meaning the effect is focused on changing the reabsorption and excretion rate of your sodium because sodium absorbs water. Let's start with the general indications of this drug. General indications includes the prevention of edema. Yes, you heard it right. Edema because an edema means that there is an increased accumulation of fluids in the body which is associated with the following conditions, hypertension, congestive heart failure, wherein the heart is unable to um, contract more fluids, okay? Cirrhosis, okay? We have your liver cirrhosis and endocrine diseases. So these are uh, the uh, general indications of their diuretics. General nursing management includes monitor the urine output, assess breathing for possible, possible, pulmonary edema, Pul possible pulmonary edema. We also need to monitor your, uh, I mean, um, inform the client about the increased urine output and frequency because that is the main assessment. We also have your, immo for immobile patient, ensure the urinary bedpan is available. Let me just, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, another one is, Weigh the client every day and an increased weight of 3 pounds per day is abnormal because the normal increase in weight per day, uh, per week, is around 1 to 2 pounds only. So, pag ikaw tumaas ka ng 3 pounds per day, that is fluid accumulation. Possibly, you're developing edema and that's not good. Okay? Maintain a sodium diet of 300 mg daily or 1 teaspoon. And do not administer at night because if this is diuretics, if you're going to administer this at night, uh, the patient will constantly go to the comfort room to urinate. And that's not good because it will alter their uh, sleeping pattern. So the administration should be done in the morning because it's not going to be a problem for them to go to the comfort room to urinate. And another one is you have to watch out for, okay, tinnitus and weakness, okay? have to watch out for tinnitus and weakness because these are main side effects of the drugs or medications. Other management includes, remember your drain pneumonics. For the drain pneumonics, this stands for diuretics, R for restrict fluid result because you have to monitor the intake and output and the salt level. Assess daily weights, indicates edema or fluid accumulation. Intake and output should be monitored and intake and output should always uh, should be almost equal to another but of course dapat mas konti ang ating output kesa intake okay and sodium level monitoring is also advised so that's 135 to 145 max per minute so let me continue now to the specific med specific medication the types of diuretics that we're going to discuss is your carbonic anhydrase inhibitors Osmotic diuretics, thiazide and thiazide-like diuretics, potassium-sparing diuretics, and loop diuretics. Let's start with number one, carbonic anhydrase inhibitors. So what is the mechanism of action of this medication? Mechanism of action includes inhibits bicarbonate reabsorption. Kung maalala niyo po kanina, sinabi ko, okay, that in the distal tubule, bicarb is being reabsorbed through the help of carbonic anhydrase. 
However, fibonic anhydrase is inhibited using this drug. Therefore, there is an inhibition of bicarb reabsorption. So it will be excreted through our urine. Bicarb are alkaline by nature. So it means to say that it will increase the alkalinity of the urine as well. Another one, it causes direct increase in bicarbonate excretion. As I've mentioned, it will be excreted through the urine and an increase in sodium and potassium excretion as well. So KAI is commonly used to patient with glaucoma. Glaucoma patient has an increased IOP or intraocular pressure. To manage that condition, we have to manage that by decreasing the production of okay, aqueous humor. Okay? The aqueous humor is the fluids in the intraocular orbit. So pag binawasan natin yon, kasi sobrang dami, bababa din ang IOP or your intraocular pressure. Example of this medication ends in your zolamide. Okay, zolamide. This includes your dorzolamide, acetazolamide, metazolamide, and your benzolamide. The most common here is your diamox. Okay, diamox is actually the drug of choice then for lithium toxicity. So the drug of choice for lithium toxicity is either diamox or mannitol. Okay. And the common side effect of this drug is your metabolic acidosis. Why? When you lose fluids, uh, when you lose alkaline through your urine, mag magkakaroon ng concentration of acid sa dugo. Therefore, you will develop metabolic acidosis. And since bicarb is alkaline, you will lose it in your urine, concentration of blood would be more on acid. But the concentration of your urine will be more on alkaline. That's why you develop urinary alkalosis. Plus, you will be losing your potassium in the process. Therefore, you will also develop hypokalemia. Okay? You will also develop hypokalemia. Okay? So that is one of the side effects. Now, indications and contraindications of the drug indicated for patient with glaucoma. This is the primarily use of this medication to treat patient with glaucoma by reducing the, the IOP, okay? Another one is alkalosis for patient with metabolic alkalosis, mountain sickness, epilepsy, and patient with phosphatemia. However, this medication is contraindicated to the following, which is your kidney stones, liver diseases, and also your electrolyte imbalances because it concerns about electrolyte imbalance. So that is basically your carbonic anhydrase. Again, the main function is to inhibit the reabsorption of your sodium bicarbonate. So let me proceed with the nursing management. Assess when rapid diuresis occurs. Rapid diuresis means continuous urina urination. So a continuous urination means it will lead to decreased blood volume. A decreased blood volume may lead to hypotension. And a decreased Blood volume will also lead into dehydration. A dehydration may lead into shock. So, ano yung mga symptoms ng shock? Hypo, tachy, tachy. So, hypo, tachy, tachy, hypotension, tachycardia, tachypnea means to say that we already having decreasing blood volume or decreasing blood circulation. Therefore, you have to monitor the blood pressure as well plus the heart rate of the patient which may indicate your rapid uh, your shock syndrome na tinatawag okay before the therapy begins establish the baseline data values and watch for significant changes that is why i have discussed earlier the normal values of the different drugs okay that you will be taking another one okay is your osmotic diuretics so for the osmotic diuretics we will be discussing this with the mechanism of action, mechanism of action starts by expanding the extracellular fluids. Mamay din discuss natin kung paano nga bang nangyayari ito. By increasing the plasma volume as well. So basically, dinadumadami ang volume ng tubig sa dugo. Okay? It washes out the cortical medullary gradient of the kidney and stops the loop of Henle from concentrating the urine. So again, the loop of Henle is where most water reabsorption takes place. Ang nangyayari doon, hindi na nagkakaroon or nabawasan ang water reabsorption sa loop of Henle. Therefore, ang tubig is na excrete natin. Okay? It increases the osmotic effects in uh, your PCT 
and increases lethal sodium and increased uh, urine secretion. So the common drugs of your osmotic diuretic, which is the only one, mannitol. Mannitol also known as your osmetrol. So mannitol will may, may lead to hypernatremia. Why? Because when you uh, when you take osmotic diuretics, you will only lose fluids. Very little amount of sodium will be excreted. Therefore, ang nagkakaroon tayo is yung tinatawag na hypernatremia. An increased level of sodium in the blood increases osmolarity as well. So, ang nangyayari doon, inaabsorb niya yung tubig from other compartments. Pag inabsorb niya yung other compartments, yung tubig sa other compartments, nagkakaroon yun ng dehydration. Example, if I may write here, okay? So, for example, if this is your... For example, if this is your blood vessel, so that's your blood vessel and this is your cell. So, pag nagkaroon tayo ng increased sodium sa dugo, okay, equals to increased osmolarity. So, an increased osmolarity meaning the movement of fluids will towards the blood vessel. So, meron tayong intracellular space, interstitial space, and your intravascular space. Okay? So, pag naiipon ang tubig dito, ang tawag natin doon is edema. So, pag hindi natin nakontrol yan, magkakaroon ng edema. So, anong trabaho ng increased osmolarity or ng osmolarity? Hilain yung excess fluids papunta doon. Ang problema, pag hinihila or mataas ang osmolarity ng dugo, nababawasan naman ang tubig ng intra interstitial space and intracellular space. Kaya nagkakaroon ng tinatawag na dehydration. Yan, yung dehydration na yan, okay, will manifest okay, yung mga dry lips, na uuhaw or thirsty. Yun po ang ibig sabihin na increased osmolarity. Mamaya, i-discuss pa natin further yan. So that's how it happens. Now, hypernatremia occurs which may lead into possible dehydration. Tulad ng sabi ko kanina, kasi hinigop yung tubig or hinila yung tubig from the interstitial and intracellular space going into your intravascular space. Kaya tumataas ang blood volume. Ngayon, chest pain is also, okay, can be a side effect, okay? Another one is congestive heart failure and hypotension, low blood pressure later on kapag naubos na yung tubig ng katawan. Kasi nga, osmotic diuretic promotes the loss of fluids. In-expand niya yung extracellular fluid and plasma volume, tas tataas naman ang glomerular filtration rate. So, mangyayari dito, increase osmotic diuretic is equals to increase blood volume. An increased blood volume will increase will increase your GFR. Increase GFR will increase urine output. An increased urine output will decrease blood volume. Kaya nagkakaroon ng na hypotension. That's why you have to watch out for blood pressure as well, hypotension. Kasi pwede pa rin silang mag-shock pag nasobrahan ito. Okay? Ngayon, i-watch out mo rin ang plebitis. Plebitis is the inflammation of your veins. Sir, bakit kailangan natin i-watch out ang plebitis? Take note po kasi, ang manitol is hypertonic solution. Hypertonic solution contains uh, sodium crystals. The sodium crystals will uh, crystallize. Okay? Kaya nga, pag nagbibigay tayo ng manitol, it has to be bolus. Mabilisan. Dapat naka-fast drip yan. Okay? At kapag nilagay mo sa ref yan, titigas din yung inyong fluids. Kaya dapat hindi nilalagay sa ref. So, dapat yan mabilis nating pinifiltrate. Kasi kung mabagal, pwede magkaroon ng crystal formation doon sa injection site mo causing now your plebitis or inflammation of the vein. Kaya nga, pag nagbibigay tayo ng manitol, dapat fast drip or mabilisan. Okay? Fast drip or mabilisan. Another one, okay, this is how it works pala. Okay, for example, this is your interstitial space or intracellular space and interstitial space. Okay, the other compartment. Ito naman yung blood vessel natin, intravascular space. So, yung vice yan, so yung movement ng fluids natin ay papunta doon. Osmotic pressure. Okay, osmotic pressure. Hinihila niya na yung tubig papunta doon sa blood vessel. Okay, so the movement of fluids will from an area of low solute concentration to an area of higher solute concentration. Kaya tumataas ang blood volume. Pag tumataas ang blood volume, 
tataas ang GFR. Mataas na GFR would increase urine output. Mataas yung urine output will diminish naman the blood volume. Okay? Which will, possible side effect is hypotension. So, sana po maliwanag yan. If you do have any questions, kindly please comment it down sa ating comment section or comment back so that I'll be able to answer it on our next video. Okay? Another one, indication of your osmotic pressure is your, number one, is your intra increased intracranial pressure to patient with brain mass. Okay? Pag ang brain mass kasi, it congested the, in the intracranial space. So, nagkakaroon ng decreased space, tas pag madami ang fluid doon sa ating utak or sa ating bungo, tumataas din yung pressure. Yun yung more than 15 mm mercury. Ngayon, kapag mataas yon delikado po yon So, anong gagawin natin? I-remove yung or bawasan ng pressure. How are we going to remove the pressure? By lessening the fluids inside the intraocular, intracranial space. Paano natin gagawin yon Through osmotic pressure. Because osmotic uh, diuretics will going to absorb the excess fluids from the intracranial space and will pull it into the blood vessel. So pag nasa blood vessel na yan, tataas ang blood volume, pupunta sa kidney for filtration, then increased filtration rate will increase the urinary output. Hence, managing the increased intracranial pressure. Other one is lowering intraocular pressure to patient with glaucoma. Pag glaucoma kasi, mataas ang kanilang pressure inside the eye orbit. Bakit? Kasi mataas ang aqueous humor or the fluids of the eye. Same purpose po. Magbibigay tayo ng osmotic diuretic by absorbing the excessive fluid from that space into the blood vessel. Tataas ang blood volume. Pupunta kay kidney for filtration. Tataas ang GFR. Tataas ang urinary output. Pag masado ng madami yon at hindi napapalitan yung tubig ng katawan, pwede mag-suffer from dehydration. Causing now your hypotaki-taki or shock syndrome pag hindi na-manage. At pwede mamatay ang pasyente. Another one is anuria and oliguria. So, absence of urination or deficit urination. Then, we have your promotion of diuresis before irreversible renal failure and drug toxicity. Drug toxicity, example, your li example lithium toxicity. Mataas ang level ng lithium sa dugo. Kailangan nating ilabas. Saan na ilalabas ito? Sa ating distal tubules. So, in the distal tubules, it will be reabsorbed from the efferent arterioles into the distal tubule and may excrete yan through our urine, causing now decreased lithium sa dugo. Okay? Yun po ang, ang function ng ating osmotic diuretics. Okay? Again, if you have any questions, just kindly please put it into our uh, description box or sa ating comment section. So, contraindications of this drug are the following. If the patient has an existing dehydration, why? Because this medication would also lead into dehydration if left unmanaged. That's why you have to watch out when giving this, okay, to patient with uh, existing dehydration because it will further uh, exacerbate the condition. Then you also manage electrolyte imbalance or watch out for possible electrolyte imbalance. So that is your osmotic diuretic. So if you do, if you have any questions, again, please comment it down sa ating comment sections so that I'll be able to answer this okay, answer this correctly for you guys, okay? So our next medication, okay, still part of the management. Again, for the management, monitor the urine output. I forgot to include this, okay? Do not give with blood. Why? Because hypertonic solutions absorbs the fluid inside the cell it will dehydrate the cell it will dehydrate the cell okay that's why you do not give it with blood transfusion you always uh, do not refrigerate this because it will crystallize and give infusion through a filter okay through a filter so that is your nursing management okay filter kasi nagki-crystallize nga para hindi pumasok sa vein and prevents phlebitis Let's go to the third um, diuretics, your loop diuretics. Among all the diuretics, siguro ito yung pinakasikat, your loop diuretics. So, your loop diuretics is a very useful, okay, when rapid diuresis is um, um, needed. And it's very potent that works on the loop of Henle, okay? 
So excretion of large quantities of urine with high levels of sodium, potassium, magnesium, and calcium by blocking the kidney's resorption. Okay? Resorption. So basically, mailalabas almost lahat ng um, electrolytes natin plus the fluids. Okay? Common medications of your loop diuretics are your, okay, furosemide, fetacrenic acids, uh, bu bumetadine, or bu bumetanide, and your torsemide. Torsemide, okay? Ang pinaka-common dyan is the highlighted, which is your furosemide, okay? Now, all of these drugs would lead to possible side effect of dizziness, headache, and ringing in the ears. So, ringing in the ears, that is your tinnitus, so, the dizziness and headache is because of your hypotension, because of the decreasing blood volume brought about by the rapid diuresis. That's why you have to watch out for blood pressure and cardiac rate to check for signs of, uh, of shock syndrome. Dehydration, thirst, and low blood pressure. This indicates shock already. Muscle cramps, weakness, and joint pain. Okay, especially for patients with gout. Why? Because this medication will also increase concentration of purine or uric acid in the blood. So, the increased uric acid concentration may lead to gouty arthritis. Gouty arthritis, okay? And another one is electrolyte imbalances. Okay, electrolyte imbalances such as hypokalemia, hyponatremia, hypomagnesemia, and hypocalcemia. So, may hypo, hypo, hypo po siya. So, you have to watch out for that. So, karamihan po ng mga symptoms na yan ay related sa muscle contractility. Okay? For hypo, ta, hypokalimia, watch out for the um, uh, arrhythmia or dysrhythmia, which is the presence of pathological U-way. Okay? Kasi kapag ECG natin, PQRST lang po yan. Dito, nagkakaroon pa ng U. So, loop diuretics po yan. Indications and contraindications, almost the same with the others, but primarily, primarily, your loop diuretics is for your pulmonary edema. Pulmonary edema is the presence of fluids inside your lungs, okay, or inside the lung field, okay? So, pulmonary edema would cause difficulty of breathing. So, removing the excess fluids from that area would address this. Paano natin gagawin yon? Loop diuretics. Let's just remove the excess fluids from our body. Okay? Indicated din siya sa mga pasyente na may hyperkalemia. Why? Because you will lose potassium through the process of taking these drugs. Kaya nga ang side effect niya is hypokalemia. Same thing kapag meron tayong hypercalcemia. If you have hypercalcemia, you just promote urination and the excess uh, electrolytes will be then excreted in our body. We also have your here congestive heart failure. The word congestion means accumulation of fluids. Why? Because you will have you will develop edema depending on the location on and depending on the type of congestive heart failure you have. If it's right-sided heart failure, the, the the edema is more on systemic edema such as bipedal edema, periorbital edema, um, enlargement of blood vessels, enlargement of veins, such as your jugular distension. Right-sided heart failure, yon. Pag left-sided heart failure naman, accumulation of fluid or the backflow of fluid goes into the lungs. That's why most manifestations would be related to lungs. Such as crackle sounds, rolls, okay, or bronchi, and the likes. Okay? And difficulty of breathing plus your pulmonary edema. Those are symptoms okay, of congestive left congestive heart failure. Contraindications in taking your, your furosemide or Lasix is edema due to congestive heart failure or chronic kidney disease, liver cirrhosis, hypokalemia, okay? And a patient is suffering from hypokalemia, okay? You have to give uh, medications to, uh, to address that. Also, this includes in your nursing management. So, administer dapat yung dogs na morning. So, dapat umaga to prevent nocturia, Okay? Administer slow through IV route in 1 to 2 minutes to prevent hypotension. Monitor blood pressure, pulse rate, and intake and output plus weigh the patient daily. Avoid stopping the drugs abruptly Okay, to give uh, uh, the body to time to adjust. Educate clients on avoiding alcohol and non-prescription drugs. drugs. And monitor serum potassium level plus administer potassium supplements which is your 
kalium. Huwag niyo kakalimutan niya. That's your kalium durul. Okay? Kalium durul. But, why? However, when giving kalium and durul or durul, okay, you have to monitor for hyperkalemia because these medications are potassium by nature. So, delikado rin naman pag nasobrahan. And take note, for IV administration of your potassium supplements, you do not administer it direct IV because it will lead to hyperkalemia and possible cardiac, okay, dysrhythmia to the patient that may lead to death. That's why you have to administer it slowly through volumetric measurement. You do not administer it direct IV. So hopefully that's uh, understandable to all, to, to all of you. Okay. So again, for any questions, please comment it down to our comment sections. We will try to answer them in our next videos. Okay. Let. Okay. So watch out for hyperkalemia as I mentioned. Next. Okay. So this is summary of your loop diuretics use. For loop diuretics includes, remember, uh, ETFAB, ETFAB, so ETFAB is etasgrenic acid, thorazamide, furosemide, azomisamide, and bumetanide. Again, the most uh, common is your furosemide, okay? Now, the clinical use of diuretics, remember, he, heart failure, hypertension, and edema. And for the side effects, remember, hypo. Hyponatremia, hypokalemia, hypomagnesemia, and autotoxicity manifested through tinnitus. So that is your loop diuretics. For any questions, again, please comment it down in our comment section. We're down to our last two drugs, the thiazide, okay, and thiazide-like diuretics. For the thiazide, okay, for the thiazide, the mechanism of action is it inhibits resor reabsorption of water. Okay, inhibits reabsorption of water, meaning it promotes excretion. Okay, it promotes excretion. So, it, uh, however, uh, and at the same time, okay, it will also promote excretion of two major important, three major important salts, sodium, potassium, and magnesium. Unlike loop diuretics, it will excrete all, including calcium. But for thiazide, it retains calcium. It retains calcium. At the same time, it also retains lipids and glucose. So meaning, while sodium, chloride, potassium, and magnesium plus water is being excreted, calcium, lipids, and glucose will be retained by the body. So matakaidea na kayo ngayon kung ano ang kanyang or you already have an idea on what will be the possible side effects based on that mechanism of action. So, this drug also has an anti-hypertensive effects. That's why it is commonly used in combination with other drugs. So, the common medications under your thiazide includes your metolazone or your saloxaline, indapamide or lozol, chlorothiazide or diuril, okay, or chlorthalidone hygroton, then then your hydrochlorothiazide or acidrix, also known as your hydrodiarrhea. So for you to remember it, you will use the mnemonic MINCH. Yeah, so MINCH. Okay, ang pinakamon dito is si hydrochlorothiazide. Hydrochlorothiazide. Okay, side effects includes the aged. The aged, these are your hyperlipidemia. Kasi may retention tayo ng lipids. Hyperuricemia. Because of increased concentration of uric acid. Hypercalcemia because there is calcium retention. Hypokalemia because we excrete potassium. Hyperglycemia because we retain glucose. And hyperlipidemia because we retain lipids. Okay? So those are the mechanism of action of these drugs. Now, indications are for the following conditions. Indications includes treatment of hypertension. Prevention and treatment and symptom, of imp symptom improvement of congestive heart failure. I have already explained congestive heart failure earlier. Treatment or edema for patient with liver failure or liver condition. Liver failure, liver condition and kidney disorder. Okay. Then contraindications includes worsening blood levels. Why? Kasi nga, pwedeng mag lead into diabetes. Why? So, bawal ito sa mga diabetic patient. Bakit? Kasi nga, mataas na ang kanyang glu glucose. Pag diabetic ka, mataas na ang glucose mo. So, lalo pang tataas pag nag-take ka ng thiazide because it retains glucose rather than excreting them. 
Another one is increase uric acid. Okay? Pwede kang magkaroon na natawag na gouty arthritis. Hypotension. Okay? Because you are losing fluids. So, mag, pag nawalan ka ng tubig, bababa ang blood volume, lalo ka pang bababa ang blood pressure mo. Allergy to sulfur-containing medications because these medications contains it. And for patient with kidney failure, this should not be done. Okay? Next, nursing management includes give with food. Bakit sa kailangan with food? Because it uh, it has a, a GI upset side effects. So, pwede ka magkaroon na gastric irritations. So, you have to give it with food or milk. So, mark calendars to provide other reminders for drug alternative day 3 to 5 because it has to be changed after that. Lord, a short term lang po ito. Reduce the dosage of other hyperhypertensive drugs at least 50% because this medication is already doing something about the hypertension. Then, administer early in the day, not in the evening, again, to prevent nocturia. Then, monitor the blood pressure for possibility of shock syndrome. Then, watch out for hyperkalemia signs and symptoms. Pag may hyperkalemia, drug of choice, drug of choice for hyperkalemia is kayexalate. Kayexalate. Or remember that. That's a very boring exam question. Kayexalate. Okay, let me continue. Next, last one, the potassium sparing diuretics. For the potassium sparing diuretics, as we have observed from the previous topics that we have discussed, or previous diuretics, all of which were um, promoting the excretion of potassium. And on the distal tubule, talagang may excrete talaga ang potassium. In this case naman po, ang mechanism of action ng potassium sparing is that from the word itself, it spares potassium. So you will lose fluid, you will lose the other uh, electrolytes, but without losing your potassium. Okay, commonly ginagamit ito sa mga pasyente that requires diuretics but has a low potassium level. So if if that if they have diure if they need diuretics but has low potassium level, then you have to give something that would not initiate the loss of potassium. Okay? Another one is weak diuretics and work by interfering with the sodium potassium exchange. Okay, tulad ng sabi ko kanina. So common medications is uh, ends with tone. So we have your spiral na lactone or spirono lactone. That's the same. Also known as aldactone. We also have your amiloride or also known as your midamore. Then we have your epler eplerenone. Or your inspra. Okay? Then we have your triamterin or dirinium. It has to be S-E-A-T dapat po yan. So that's the mnemonic. Anyway, triamterin or dirinium. Okay? Side effect of this medication is tummy ache or cramps, dry mouth, and nausea and vomiting because you are promoting hyperkalemia. Orthostatic hypotension because of your loss of fluids, decreasing now blood volume, leads into decreased... Um, Blood pressure, hyperkalemia. So you have to watch out for hyperkalemia as a side effect because you are retaining the potassium and not excreting them. Then gynecomastia is common especially to patient taking spironolactone. Why? Because it has an anti-androgen effect. Okay? So anti-androgen effect. Higher androgen, it will give you the picture of a male. Pero meron siyang anti-androgen, ibig sabihin, androgen will go down. So, male will develop um, female characteristics such as an enlargement of the breast, which is known in female as gynecomastia. So, what are the indications in nursing management? Uh, the indication of this drug is for patient who is having, uh, who needs to be uh, taking the diuretics but has a low potassium level. Nursing management, I mean, indications to prevent hypokalemia. Please correct that. Okay, that's indications versus your contraindications. To prevent hypokalemia when other diuretics are in use. Treatment of heart failure. Reduce ascites. Ascites is the accumulation of fluids in the peritoneal cavity. Commonly, uh, a side effect or complication of hepatic conditions. 
Then treatment for hypertension in combination with other medications. So contraindication includes hyperkalemia in patients with Addison's disease and severe kidney failure. You cannot give this drug to them because they will retain potassium. Hence, um, they are in danger of suffering from uh, cardiac arrhythmias. And the next one, monitor blood pressure, pulse, intake and output, okay, ratios and daily weight. Basic naman po ito, lahat ng diuretics, kailangan mong gawin yan. Avoid stopping the drugs abruptly because it promotes orthostatic hypotension. It has to be gradual. Educate clients on avoiding alcohol and non-prescription drugs. Assess and monitor the client's heart rate and blood pressure and perform a physical assessment to auscultate lung sounds and check for edema. Now, for the summary of all the drugs, you can have it here from the CA inhibitors, loop diuretics, tyrosine, potassium sparing osmotic diuretic. For tyrosine mechanism of action, it inhibits sodium bicarbonate reabsorption. For loop diuretics, it, uh, it promotes the excretion of fluids plus all the electrolytes. Tyrosine has almost the same function with loop diuretics with the exemption of retaining calcium. Okay, so nagre-retain siya ng calcium. For the potassium sparing, okay, it almost has the same function with the other. With the exemption of that, it, uh, it keeps potassium. So, hindi siya binibigay sa mga pasyente na may hypokalemia. Osmotic diuretics, uh, mechanism of action is the promotion of osmotic effect in the post, uh, proximal tubules. The effects of the following are also written there. For CA inhibitors, it will increase sodium bicarb in the urine. Potassium in the urine, so it will make the urine alkalotic, but it will make the blood acidotic. So for the uh, uses, glaucoma, mountain sickness, alkalosis, and phosphatemia to include your epilepsy. Side effects is metabolic acidosis, yeah. urinary alkalosis, and hypokalemia. For the uh, loop diuretics, we have your potassium Okay, then urinary, increase urinary sodium, potassium, and calcium, magnesium. Then uses for acute pulmonary edema, which is the drug of choice, heart failure, hyperkalemia, and hypercalcemia. Hypokalemia, hypovolemia, hyponatremia, hypomagnesemia, hypocalcemia, and precipitation of gout, and alkalosis are all its side effects. For the tyrosine, sodium and chloride con transport in DCT, it retains calcium, but increase the urination and sodium, potassium, and magnesium excretion. It will also promote metabolic alkalosis. Use this, use this drug to patients with hypertension, mild failure, heart failure, nephrolithiasis, and diabetes insipidus. Okay, watch out for hypercalcemia and metabolic alkalosis. And for the potassium sparing, it retains potassium while excreting the others. Okay, use the patient with hepatic cirrhosis or patient with uh, liver condition that, that develops ascites. And it develops gynecomastia, specifically spironolactone. So, kapag nag-develop na siya nun, mas maganda ibigay mo yung other drugs. Okay. And the last one is osmotic diuretics to the use of osmotic pressure. Increase urine excretion but little urine sodium excretion. Ginagamit siya sa mga pasyente na may cerebral edema, okay, glaucoma, and acute renal failure. Then excess of water expansion, dehydration should be watched out as part of the side effect. So those are your drugs. Affecting now your renal system. If you do have any question, please feel free to comment that in our comment box or comment section. So consider to subscribe, like, and share this video. Thank you very much for watching. See you on our next video. Thank you.